Hi, good evening. I'll be giving you a training on Elasticsearch. So basically, uh, so yep. Yeah, so let me just uh, first uh, just tell you who am I and what do I do. So I am uh, I am a DevOps engineer, senior DevOps engineer with a uh, with financial organization, and uh, so we deal with the latest sta uh, st stack of the on the DevOps, right? We work on the certain stuff as in like, uh, like Kubernetes, uh, Elasticsearch, Kafka. And uh, and there are certain uh, other tools, other stacks such as configuration management stack, which we work on. So as far as this is concerned, uh, uh, the fact that what I have done, what I have achieved, uh, so so much. And so I have built uh, multiple things. I have built the infrastructure from the scratch. The time when the DevOps was not the hot soul technology, so I was also unaware of it, and uh, I started building infrastructure. So I built uh, the company from uh, the company's infrastructure from the scratch, and uh, uh, I have achieved some fantastic results. So I've been awarded the, uh, for that also. So so this is all about me. Let us start with the uh, you know let us start with the fact that what you are going to be taught uh, for, uh, in this in this particular lecture. So so uh, basically, Elasticsearch is a is is not a very huge topic, but yes. It is one of the important topics, and uh, you know it can be considered as the as the database. But but uh, uh, it stores the value in the in the JSON JSON format. All right. So uh, so I'll tell you first. Uh, let me tell you the scope of this uh, particular demo. So the first will be introduction. Second will be install installing and understanding of Elasticsearch. So for this, I've already mentioned that uh, you will be needing a laptop. And then a stable internet connection. Other than this, uh, I don't think there is any other need because we'll be downloading a free version of Elasticsearch, and which comes as free it's because it's open source and the, and Kibana also, right? So uh, you know, uh, so so we will be dealing with the uh, with the fact that that how does this this what is the need of Elasticsearch first, and uh, then we will be dealing with that how do we get the data into Elasticsearch, right? There is something which should be writing into Elasticsearch, correct? And then, then uh, what are the key components, internal key components of the Elasticsearch? So we'll be talk, we'll be speaking about that, and then we'll be talking about that. Then we will be looking into the like, how to query it, you know, and how to query Kibana, right? And uh, how to create an index on Kibana? Uh, what is the use of log stash, and uh, what is a beat, right? So, so this then the entire ELK stack. Once we complete uh, all these three, uh, these four components, the Elasticsearch will we will summarize Elasticsearch, okay? And uh, then we will get to know some real time scenarios at how Elasticsearch is used in the current uh, organization. Uh, I mean, in the organizations on the basis of uh, uh, you know that how do people use it. So let us start. Okay, so what is an Elasticsearch? As I've already told you, it's a kind of database which stores the data in the form of uh, inverted indexes, right? So when I talk when I talk about inverted indexes, what are actually inverted indexes? Index, as in like uh, you know, uh, so so index in Elasticsearch is a very huge term, right? So you might be uh, thinking about that index is uh, you know the index of a book. Right or an index of a uh, or an index of or a gloss, grocery grocery page for of of a book right but uh, I, you cannot always uh, but in Elasticsearch this works in a different way in in Elasticsearch index is the topic which is similar to the content and under that particular topic there are certain certain contents right which is your data right so when you talk about I am indexing a data. Uh, when you say when I'm writing the data into, into Elasticsearch, it's not writing. It it is just like you are indexing the data into the Elasticsearch. So these are the certain components which you might not be familiar about. However, you will be once we start doing the uh, the the lecture. Once we reach further, okay. So it stores the data in the JSON format. So JSON is 
key and value structure so key is your key which is irreversible and then value is the value which can, which is mutable so key is or uh, if you you all might have learned python so uh, python comes with the feature known as dictionary dictionary right in dictionary you say you write key and value correct value is always mutable which is change mutable is changeable and the key is is the is the immutable part right so uh, in order to change the key you need to make certain changes to the index or you need to delete by that particular index right so so uh, the, this is this is this is how you uh, define the index and this is what you do on index then you do certain certain queries on indexes so so let us uh, move further uh, into the brief uh, introduction of this elastic search and then later we can come on to indexing and everything correct uh, so uh, elastic search uh, is 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 made up of uh, you know three components so uh, so first component is uh, uh, is the is the uh, shards and then uh, then there are rep uh, then there are replicas replica shards and there and then there and there are primary shards so uh, these components uh, play an important role when you talk about the and in uh, about elastic search so these shards are under the indexes right suppose for an example uh, what could be an index let's say so you have bought a car right now there are multiple people who buy a car so car here becomes the index under the car index there are multiple there are there, there could be multiple data which is just like who bought the car who the person who bought the car what is the model of the car then there is one more thing what color of car that uh, that the person bought and what will what was the value so this car is a broader index it's an index under that you are uh, you know uh, writing the data those these are your documents right like who under who there will be there could be multiple people right and then for the model there could be multiple models as multiple people bought and then color there could be multiple colors and the value again multiple values. so basically uh, let's say uh, now how are the uh, let's let's talk about the basic concept how are the uh, shards created so so uh, when you download elastic search right and start it up to create what do you do first you create elastic search nodes right uh, and now uh, once you have installed it it will it will create elastic search nodes it could be a physical server it could be a virtual server or it could be a kubernetes spot depends you know so it tries to join a join a cluster if it is available right so i let let us give in let let me give you an example let's say that uh, you have created your own cluster uh, with a single node so that's the one which is been started up right and you have we have no data right and uh, so therefore we need to create an index right currently it's it's an empty cluster so so there are there are certain commands to create an index so what happens when you create an index so when you create an an index uh, at that particular point of time you can define how many shards you want to keep it will be composed of if you and let's say if you don't define the shard it by default uh, you know the number of shards which will be created per index would be five it would be less than that but it could be and but it is pi only okay so let us say uh, that uh, under elastic search there are a certain uh, you know there there is an index right and under index there is a shard there are shards so by default the shard number is five it means that elastic search will create uh, five primary shards that will contain the data so so every time when we index index a document so remember i told you indexing is writing in elastic search indexing is writing so whenever you write a document elastic search or index a document i would say let us let me use the term which is correct uh, so that you don't confuse it when you are giving your interviews right so whenever you are using it in the real term you should, you should not confuse it every time when you index a document uh, what what elastic search will what elastic search will do it will decide which primary shard is supposed to hold that particular document and will index it there it is dependent on elastic search it is not so now you should understand 
there are two kind of shards one is primary shard as i told you and there one is replica shard okay so so uh, don't misunderstand that that the, the primary shards are you know uh, are the are, are not the copy uh, so, so so understand this primary shard are not the copy of the data okay they are the data you know when you talk about shards they are the data because they contain data just understand it as it as a hard drive which has your data so let us say that having a multiple shards it does help you in taking the advantage of parallel processing so let's say if you are querying multiple documents out of elastic search right if there is only one index and there is only one chart in that particular index it would take time to fetch that particular kind of information right let's say if you do a select on the multiple queries or uh, if you do a if you do a huge query if it is coming out of one chart understand how much time will this take right so in uh, in that particular sense it is always ad advisable and uh, you know it is a, it is a good practice to have multiple charts uh for parallel processing in a single machine right but but uh, just just understand this the uh, the whole point uh, is that the whole point uh, for this particular conversation is that it, so if let us let us say if we start another elastic search instance right on the same cluster so what it what will happen the shards will distribute in an even way over the cluster so by default let's say you have an index and then you created five shards out of it five replica shards uh, shards out of it so when you add uh, uh, you know uh, one more node onto the same cluster what is what it is going to happen these shards will divide themselves so basically this is the mechanism how what elastic search follows what happens in there is for an example currently there are five uh, this thing shards and uh, the, you there was one node now you add one more node then out there two, two nodes so elastic search will uh, redistribute the shot in even fashion now there are five shots how will it do it so uh, the first node will hold three shots and the second node will hold two shots or vice versa depends okay uh, so now why does this happen actually you might be thinking that why why does it happen you know it should let it should create something else why you know it is distributing it It's a distributed search engine, and this way it can make you make use of multiple nodes to manage a big amount of data. So that is why uh, it is used. So so basically, either you use Hadoop cluster to handle the big data, or you use Elastic Search. Both are not the same things because Elastic Search has certain limitations, which we will talk uh, further. And uh, so so what is the what is the need in here is is the you know to handle such a large amount of data you need elastic search kind of system let's say by by default every every elastic uh, elastic search index is composed of at least one uh, primary shard since let's say uh, there will be one primary shard so since that will be the only place that where the data will be stored now just think about it that uh, every shard which comes you know it comes at a cost right what is the cost of that particular thing it's not i'm not talking about money but i'm talking in the terms of resources right so so basically uh, let's say if you have a single node right and there is no foreseeable growth only one single shard will work because it has got the data and there is no growth then you keep querying 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 that's okay so there is one more type of shard which we talked about which is a replica shard and by default it is one it creates every primary shard has one uh, replica shard so what it does so by default as the replica shard name indicates primary shard always copies its data onto a replica shard but will that be readable the answer is no replica shard so so uh, that it will contain the same data but it will not be readable so what happens is so replicas are so these replicas what they are do what they do is they are used to increase the search performance and so what does it do so the search performance as i already told you right so as many replicas are there is it will be easier to search so so it also helps in the failover also let's take our example back with the, so let's say uh, there are uh, five replica shards 
uh, five shards, primary shards that you create, and it will have uh, one replica each. So let's say five. So it will be like one R, two R, three R, four R, and five R, right? And it contains uh, the same data. So now just just picturize it. That uh, let me just uh, show you something. Uh, let's say uh, we we talked about primary shards. So when we talked about our example, we said that okay, there will be two nodes joining the cluster, and uh, the primary shards will be divided. So I'll point the primary as dot. So now let's say so then we talked about there will be one replica for each primary, right? So uh, I'll give them the chips so that so that you guys are aware about the fact what I am trying to do. So just see that these are five shards, primary shards. Now, as per our principle, there should be one replica shard. There should be one replica shard. So let's create the replica shard of this. So since it has same data, so I will add a dash over it. Then number two is this. Then there is number three. Okay, similar way for uh, number four dash over. So understand this. So now what happens since uh, since we have two replica shards, it will be allocated on the first node. Uh, they will contain exactly the same data as a primary shard. So we have we are, we are seeing these these example this one and then so the second node what will it, it will contain the copy of the first node. So then we can see it here. So uh, let's say. Uh, let's say if if one of the node uh, goes down so then we still have one, this index so there are five and five if any of these goes down i still have my shards available these replica shards will become a primary shards okay so now how does this happen so what happens is this so in this particular case the replica automatically becomes primary and cluster will work as it used to but it with certain degradation not in the performance. What happens is, is this the, these replica shards will become primary shards. So uh, since and but but remember this since uh, we have uh, given number of replicas as one. So now this prime when this become primary, it will create its own replica. But now its replica is no now the replica cannot be assigned to a certain node, right? So uh, what happens? So it is never allocated till the node comes up, and it goes in pending. And the cluster will go in. There are states in in uh, this thing in Elasticsearch. One is yellow, other is green, and there is red. So green means everything is okay. Uh, okay, let's let's lose in the traffic. Uh, yellow is like you know, cluster is in degraded degraded state. Cluster is in degraded state. Now need to work on it. And and the third is red. The cluster is in critical stage. At that this particular point of time, the searching and all that you do will not result into any results. It will give the continuous failure. So okay, just, uh, let us talk about shards a little bit more, right? So here is is just like the what is a shard? Uh, let us revise it. So the shard is being distributed uh, a search server. What Elasticsearch has a concept of shards to distribute the index documents, right? across all the nodes so uh, basically just understand this an index can potentially store a large amount of uh, so what an index can do is this it can store potentially store a large amount of uh, data and can also exceed the hardware limit of a single node let's say my this particular node this whole thing had 10 tbs of space so i can store the data worth more than this so that should not be a problem and so that is just like just understand the concept of subscribed and the available. Okay, I'll give you an example for this also. Uh, let's say a single index has the 1 billion document, all right, taking 1 TB of disk space. Now, this particular uh, does not fit uh, the disk on a single node, or it may become a, a very slow, right? To, uh, to uh, you know, but it can be accommodated. Right. So once the it becomes larger, the search becomes slower, but still the document is there. So now let's say let's say there is an index uh, which is documenting indexing multiple documents, right? And it's a one TB, and it does not fix the disk uh, on the certain on a single node, right? So searches will become slow. Now what happens is uh, is that to solve this problem, what Elasticsearch provides is the ability 
to subdivide your indexes into a multiple pieces called charts so now we are clear about the charts we have been talking about the charts since the first uh, since the first uh, this thing since the first uh, since the first uh, time when we started speaking so basically uh, just remember this whenever we create an index we can simply define the number of charts number 1 the number of charts we want right documents are actually stored in charts and the charts are located onto the nodes but as the cluster just you need to keep this in mind within you do need to listen this with an open mind as soon as the cluster grows or shrinks at that particular point of time the elastic search will automatically migrate the charts and the cluster is banned so it will elastic search is so smart that what it does uh, let's say if you kill one node it will automatically start the shard allocation that okay i need to accommodate these particular shards so that my data is not unavailable so so that is i wanted to talk about however let us uh, there are few things that uh, i would like you to know uh, since we uh, so you know there are two kinds of shards primary and replica shards and then you know uh, elastic search it allows us to make one or more copies of your index shards which what we call it as a replica shards or replicas in short right and an index you know a, an index can have a zero on shards also so that is true so uh, once we complete this particular course i'll be taking some mock interview so these mock interviews will purely focus on elastic search you know what is it used so you need to be pretty much keen on this that what all questions could be asked on elastic search you know how you can you know uh, basically we will be we will be dealing with how to create an environment if somebody asks you to create an elk stack how would you go around it? so basically we will be dealing with that then you will have a course completion certificate and uh, will be a certificate of achievement and thank you so much for attending this demo uh, you can always uh, get in touch with us and uh, you can call us on the Skype numbers you can take the note of it uh, thank you